lower urinary tract obstruction, um, also called, known as a luto, is a fetal anomaly whereby there is an obstruction in the bladder outlet. There are actually many causes and there are some conditions that look like luto but may not in fact be luto, so-called imitators. Um, but the most common cause that we will see is something called posterior urethral valves. And there are different types of urethral valves and essentially this is a, uh, a thin piece of tissue that blocks the urethra and it's very close to the bladder wall. The other conditions that make up this um, constellation of, of luto are urethral atresia, which means absence of the urethra, so there's no opening at all, or urethral stenosis, which is narrowing to the point that the urine cannot get out uh, in large enough volumes. And at the end of the day, what this lower urinary tract obstruction does is it blocks the outflow of urine, the kidneys continue to make urine, and so the bladder, which is a thin-walled structure, enlarges and enlarges and enlarges and it becomes damaged. It can become fibrotic so that the muscle no longer works very well. And then the pressure starts to back up towards the kidneys. And at some point, the pressure gets so great that it damages the kidneys and can even destroy the kidneys. So uh, this is a very serious condition. The issues that they have is that the amniotic fluid around a baby is really fetal urine. And so if there is no outlet for this fetal urine, after about 13, 14 weeks, there's no more fluid around that baby. A baby requires fluid to grow the lungs. So all the time that the baby is inside the, the uterus, uh, during lung development, it's breathing that fluid in and out. And that fluid is helping those lungs develop normally. If there's no fluid around the baby, you can see the lungs don't develop normally. So the whole objective of trying to bypass the obstruction is essentially to allow for proper lung development. When the babies have no fluid uh, in the amniotic cavity, the lungs will not develop properly. And at the time of delivery, lungs will be too small or too immature to support the baby's life. The other problem, obviously, is the uh, progressive damage of the kidneys. Uh, sometimes we see that over time, we see that the kidneys are more dilated and they look a little bit brighter in the ultrasound, which indicates there is progressive uh, damage to the kidneys. It tends to be identified either in the first trimester by ultrasound, but it's frequently picked up uh, in the second trimester ultrasound at the time of what we call the anatomy scan, which typically is between 18 to 23 weeks. So, to classify this, we look at the kidneys and also we look at the amount of fluid around the babies. Uh, and the third parameter that we use to study how bad the, is the obstruction is to put a needle, uh, to essentially introduce a needle through the mom's abdomen and direct uh, into the baby's bladder and to get a, a sample of urine. Uh, so the urine will be sent to the lab uh, for evaluation. We have uh, several parameters, uh, several uh, biochemical parameters uh, that will be used uh, to determine to which extent the kidneys are still working or not. And based on these parameters, we can determine as to whether the function of the kidney is normal, the function of the kidney is borderline, or the function of the kidney is abnormal. And so we use all, all these metrics, uh, including the uh, study of the, of the fetal urine, the ultrasound appearance, as well as the, the fluid around the baby to determine as to how severe the case is. And um, we, at our institution, uh, we propose a classification based on all these parameters, and we are glad to hear that many other institutions are essentially adopting these criteria to, for a better selection. We, we believe that patient selection is key uh, for to identify patients who may benefit from from an intervention. 
The most common intervention is something called a shunt. And this is a little plastic tube that is, uh, one end is put into the bladder and the other end is left outside the baby's tummy. And so it's just a drain. It just allows that urine to get out around the baby. Typically this procedure is done under ultrasound guidance with uh, local anesthesia. The mothers will receive some sedation uh, and uh, we perform this in the operative room. The first thing you have to do is do an amniocentesis. So you have to put a needle in and then put fluid into the uterus to create a zone of fluid around the baby because there usually is no fluid around the baby. Then that needle is advanced into the bladder of the baby and a shunt is then placed down that needle. The one end comes out, it's a little double pigtail, so the little pigtail comes out and it's preformed. Then you pull the needle out of the baby and push the other end of the shunt out so the other end is outside the baby. The intervention, meaning the placement of this catheter or shunt, may allow for proper lung development, uh, but not necessarily benefit the, the, or prevent further damage in the kidneys. Before we proceed with the intervention, we would explain to the moms the risks to them as well as to, to the risks uh, to the pregnancy. It's a complex disease, lower urinary tract obstruction. It is, is, a, is a disease that is difficult to treat. I believe that what makes us unique is the fact that uh, we are pushing for a proper selection of patients. The usual way that this would go is that the patient would, uh, would come to the center, would be counseled about the condition, would have an ultrasound and possibly an MRI depending on the imaging uh, capabilities and how well we can see the baby. The patient will then be counseled about uh, the risks and benefits of any potential testing or intervention. And in order to be able to counsel them about these interventions, we need to know some hard data. One of the tests that we will always recommend is a test of the fetal chromosomes. To determine whether the baby may be a candidate for intervention, we need to determine first whether the chromosomes are normal. We need to determine what is the function of the kidneys, and in order to do so, we need to get a sample from the baby's urine. It's going to be a 48 to 72 hour waiting period before we decide as to whether we, we can intervene or not. Typically, the uh, fact that the baby has a obstruction of the urinary outlet should not change the obstetrical management. So the decision as to whether the mom may have a vaginal delivery or a C-section should be based on the obstetrical uh, criteria. So in our opinion, you know, the, if there is an obstetrical indication for vaginal delivery, we will probably encourage that. This is a referral center, so we tend to see patients from different parts of the states as well as uh, from out of states. And because of the location of Houston, we also tend to see patients from, from, from uh, Mexico and Central America. We would be um, very happy to work with their referring doctor. Uh, very often those people would come back here to deliver if they don't have the necessary nephrology and urology services in their town or at their hospital. All of these kids absolutely are going to require follow-up by a pediatric urologist and if their kidney function is poor, pediatric nephrologist. The shunting improves the chances for the baby to survive, but it doesn't prevent renal damage. They need to hear from the pediatric nephrologists and urologists that some of these babies may need to stay in the neonatal intensive care unit for, for sometimes, sometimes weeks or months, depending on how bad is the function of the kidneys. A lot of patients do come here and meet all of our uh, specialists and then just feel so comfortable and understand that this is an integrated service that the fetal intervention team works so well with the pediatric nephrologist and the urologist and the NICU and it's one seamless transition, a lot of people will look at that and say, you know, it just makes sense for me to deliver here. We probably see 
more than most fetal centers in the country. We get patients from all over the country who uh, are referred here and we are one of the more aggressive programs in, uh, in fetal intervention for these um, cases.